I want to make sure that you have all this new marketing. I'm on your mail email list, so you'll send it to me, right? I'll be getting stuff through your email list, I would imagine, all the new stuff that you have coming up. Oh, yeah, you're on the um, master list anyway, okay, perfect. and okay. you'll get updates. And I'm on your mail email Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, unless you, uh, unless you tell us to unsub, yeah. Unless you, uh, unless you tell us to uh, unsubscribe or something like that. Um, you know, absolutely. Let's talk about success for a moment. The techniques of success. Let me share a little. Let me share a little of my business background. We had a phenomenal March. Uh, March was a historically great month. I did something very unique. I did a new package called How to Handle Phone Fear. And it was based on the response I got on the Monday group call. It seems the number one thing that's holding people back financially is that they're not talking to people. We have in our mind that we can automate everything. We can systematize. Here's the word I hear from a lot of young people. I want to systematize. And there's nothing wrong with systematizing, making things easier. Okay, but when you're talking about capital sales or even selling Amway shampoo, what will sell better? What will get you the greatest results? Now, most of us are in real estate here. Okay, that's what I call capital sales, you know, high end, big dollar sales. Um, will a postcard, will a text, will a nice virtual assistant in the Philippines, will that is, is what's more likely to close a deal? You getting on the phone or getting on Zoom, for instance, I love Zoom because it allows me that face-to-face. -face. I'm almost in the living room. What, what, what'll what get you the best results? Talking to people or using electronic communication? Talking to people. Why? why? Let's go deep on this. Why is one-on-one -on -one so much more? Can we all agree on one thing? That when we talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, especially in real estate, it's much more effective. Man, I do need a haircut. Um, it's <laughs> looks like a wig. <laughs> San Diego, here I come. <laughs> I'm going. We, oh, Lou, tell them about these great. I'm going to digress here. I'll cut. Bring me, bring me back, Alan. Okay, Lou, tell them about these barber shops we have in uh, Chula Vista, um, where they have the 15 chairs, and you come in, no waiting, and you get your 8.99 haircut or whatever, right? Well, it's not 8.99, not anymore. Well, oh, no. <laughs> Do you remember yeah. when it used to be like a five, six bucks or something? Yeah. And, and you would just come in and they would fight over you. I'm next. I'm next. And you just sit in the chair. You don't get a choice. Oh, and yeah. then they go, you know, and man, you know, 98 seconds later, you got a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> now we can start to call Felipe's here. Yes. We, Felipe's we can here. start now. now we thank can you. Go. Thank you. So now sorry. So sorry for keep you guys waiting. It's just like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm babysitting one of the girls today. She's, she's, you know, she's, doing homeschooling and uh she had some questions and yeah boo freaking yeah, boo, boo. <laughs> yeah. So, i'm teaching her to become a, a gut self oh, oh i gotta raise my children i'm responsible for them <laughs> yeah you know what uh, fml but uh anyway chris chris rock does the funniest bit on youtube okay it's not something you play in front of your grandmother if you know chris rock but Chris Rock does this thing where a guy goes to him, he says, you know, I take care of my kids. He says, man, what do you want, a cookie? You're supposed to take care of your kids. Oh, real quick. Can we record, please? Uh, yeah. Who who wants to record? Uh, let's see. Ellen. There we Ellen. go. Let's, I got to set this up so it's just automatic. I'll do that for all you guys. What was the, our topic was, what has the greater chance of influence or making money today or making a sale? What, what is the greatest opportunity? Sending texts, sending emails, sending postcards, having that, having that nice girl in that third world Costa Rican country call you up or, 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 or you getting on the phone and having a, a friendly conversation that you can control without seeming controlling. What, what, what gets the best results to make you money today? What works? Claude Diamond on the phone. Say again? Claude Diamond on the phone. Okay, but I, that's me. And I, and you know what? You know what's really my secret of success? I love this shit. Pardon my language. I love Amen, brother. Can I get an I'm amen, brother? For amen. That? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> um, I love it. 
Okay. I really enjoy when I talk to a human being last month, I started to say that and I, I lost my train of thought last month was a great month because I sent out the phone fear, had a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, a lot of people attraction. I put out a very low price. It's five ninety five now, but it was ninety nine dollars for my phone fear package. I got we sold hundreds, hundreds. And we had no idea. And those people now went to my YouTube and subscribed. Now they're in my database because they get a free consultation. Guess what happens when you talk to a lot of people and they're following you and they know who you are. You're not calling them up because you saw their name on the Chuck E. Cheese bathroom wall. They're calling you up. You're calling them. They're communicating with you because they found you have some credibility or interest. Guess what? Guess what happens to your business when when you do stuff like that? I mean, it explodes and, and the, I mean, there's a big, big difference between inbound attraction and outbound marketing, you know, like outbound, uh, I mean, inbound, it's by far the one that, that's going to have the highest conversion, you know, when people come to you and because you're putting out valuable content or you're giving away something for free or, or, you know, or you have like, um, a social presence. Okay. Uh, from there, you could you could actually you know include the referrals, which is also great. But uh, but like Claude said on a previous call, we don't want to be an annoying pest asking for five referrals, like you know like the typical you know amateur ins uh, sales in uh, insurance person. But then you have outbound, and I can tell you a lot about it because that's what I've been doing for the past three years, four years. It generates so much noise that by the time that you're that you you talk to the 99 prospect that said no. And that pee on your back and told you it was raining. What happens is that is that when you talk to the one person, the one person that uh, that might be a, a good fit, you're wore down. You know you're not in your A game, and 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 that you know like you're pretty much doing yourself a disservice. Yes, you can have people you know like doing appointment setting for you. Then yes, you can you know, like uh, send outbound text messaging, that's okay. You know, that's, that's a great thing. But what you don't never want to delegate uh, until you're really, really, you know, like extremely good at it, it's the sales. Because that's the lifeblood of your business. And, how, about and you, how about if you sell, you get good at sales, but you absolutely love the freedom, your own business, you're in control. I'm a horrible employee. Okay, even my good bosses were assholes sometimes. You know, they were the, tr you know, the thing is, I love the freedom. If you tell me, Claude, you have to stay here until five o'clock every day, don't you leave? And to me, that's torture. Okay, but for my own business, I'll work till nine, 10 o'clock at night uh, because I want to. How important is the passion of the product and the freedom and the reward, the money you make? Because no one will pay you what you can pay yourself if you have the right business and the right skills? There's, it's probably the second best feeling in the world. You know, you feel empowered. You feel empowered and and and, and remember he has, that- He has three, I'm sorry to interrupt. He has three kids, so he knows the first, obviously. Yeah, yeah. All day. <laughs> uh, and that's, you know, one of the, the beauties of working working from home, that, you know, you can't beat that. But uh, anyway, so the, 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 the one thing that you guys want to remember is that in every situation, the person that has the most emotional control has more chances of getting the, out, the outcome they want. It's just the, and, and the more desperate you are uh, to get a deal, the less you're going to get. It. It's just that's how it works. So that's why, you know, like one of the things that, that probably a lot of people don't teach in traditional sales training because it's all focused on on technique, strategy, marketing. Nobody else talks about picking up the damn phone. Nobody else talks about the, the mindset that you have to have, you know, how to think, act, and sound like a millionaire. Yeah. Because that's the shit nobody else talks about because, yeah, you know, like all the sales training comes from, okay, you got a lead, you got to say this, this, but what happens after? How do you attract that lead? How do you, how do you put yourself in an emotional state that it's going to allow you to get the best, you know, like convert them. So yeah, I, I get so, I get so passionate about this shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I got to let other people talk. I'm going to mute myself now. The, the funny thing is it gets easier if you, if you have the sales skill and you enjoy the challenge, it's almost like a chess game. They make one move and in your head, you're thinking, okay, what gut strategy, what question should I use redirection? Should I use a pattern interrupt? Um, should I stroke or nurture? Should I just sit back and be quiet and do a pregnant pause? It, to me, it's chess. They make a move and you have to think one, two, three moves ahead. What a, a master, who knows anything about chess here? 
who's a chess player here? Um, in chess, the master players, the great ones, the Bobby Fishers, and all, don't they think about three to five moves ahead both, on both sides of the table? Sometimes beyond that. Really? Yeah. Really? That's what it seems like to me. And I enjoy the challenge. I love when I make a sale, the endorphins start. Pump. Anybody get endorphins pumping when you make when you make a sale, when you persuade another person? And you get and you make uh, you get a contract, you get a check of a credit card, a, a money transfer, and you get, and you have that nice little honeymoon period between the two parties. How how good yeah. does that feel? Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't have to be the world's biggest sale. It could be just a little sale. I when I get on the phone with somebody and say, Claude, I I saw your phone fear package, and I know it's going up and everything. And I said, Well, it's ninety nine dollars now. And I said, But wh why do you think you need it? And see, the amateur guy would say, oh, let me tell you all about the package, and it does this and this and this. I'll go to a question. Why do you think you need a package dealing with the anxiety of a phone call? And they will sell themselves and close themselves if you give them the chance. And you push them away. That, that guts, you push them away. They start selling. They basically doing all the talking. You're doing 25%. They're doing 75%. And they're selling themselves on whatever you're trying to sell them. But they're doing all the work. That's this is so, what we are talking about right push now is so powerful. Yeah. It can make you so happy. It can make you so financially free. If you stop selling intellectually features and benefits, if you stop giving those premature presentations and you just go into the diagnostic mode, gee, why, why do you want to sell your house? Your kids grew up. Why do you want to buy a house? You got a house already. Why don't you stay with your mother-in-law in the basement? I, why do you want to buy a car? Your car, that 15 year old Hyundai will run another 15 years. If you take care of it, you don't really need it. Do you No. And then they will sell themselves. If you just use a little reverse psychology, a little reader, and they won't, here's the best part. It's so stealth. They won't even see what you're doing while you're doing that. Is that manipulative, by the way? Let's let's be critical on me here. Is that manipulative? I mean, it is. It is, but it's called positive manipulation. And it's because if we believe that we're going to add value and, and, and solve a problem, because that's what we are, problem solvers. It is our moral responsibility to help this person. More, mortal, it, more, moral, 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 <laughs> moral responsibility. Moral so, responsibility. So, yeah, and it, yeah. So, so that's. I mean, the way I see it is that is like, like it's the same as you know, like right now these days you see all these people that they're like zombies on their, on their, <laughs> on their iPhones, and and you see them like that. If you see a guy that is gonna, it's about to walk on on a, on a crosswalk, and and he's actually, and it's in red, and he's about to get run over. Wouldn't you grab that guy from the shoulder? And, and just say, hey, dude, you need to stop, you know, like stop what you're doing. It's stupid. And sometimes we do that with, with, with guts. We do like a like a shock and awe move and then we fix it. So that's what's what's really amazing about this. And, and if you're if you have if you believe that you can help somebody and, and solve a problem, it's OK to use some positive manipulation. This is very controversial, very controversial. But let's get, but. Let's Let's give Herva, Herva, Hervasio a shot here. Hervasio, this is a real important question. What the hell is on that T-shirt of yours? What is that design? This is very important. Garfield. It's Gar. I love Garfield, the, the lasagna cat, right? Garfield. Okay. I, I, I couldn't figure out what that was. I said, I got to know. <laughs> You and I get together, my, my SpongeBob boxer shorts and your Garfield T-shirt. My God, we could, we could walk holding hands in San Francisco. No, no. <laughs> Ooh, now we, got, now we got politically correct. No, that's, I love it. I love it. I love it. We need to laugh some more. We, need, we've, we have forgotten in this little woke. Is woke the same thing as political correctness? Somebody help me here. Oh. I think woke is just being aware of no, Say again, buddy. Are you saying woke? I think woke means just being aware and being aware of, of what's going on. I, Not being cheap. I thought woke means you're aware and sensitive to every other everybody else's tender sensibilities. I understand woke is being aware, aware and not being a sheep. Not yeah. Okay. Okay. I think we I think we need to laugh a lot more. 
You know, comedians cannot go on college campuses right now because what do comedians do that make you laugh? They say they take little bits of truth, sometimes stereotypes about different cultures and really, and they take little things and they make fun of them in good hearted nature. And like you take a, like a Don Rickles and everything. He made, he made fun of everybody. I don't think Don Rickles could exist today. What are you, right? Right. Uh -huh. I mean, Jerry Seinfeld says he won't go on a college campus anymore. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, Any people getting their feelings hurt? Say again? Your, your audio is not very good, Hervasio. I'm sorry. Yeah, you were making fun of my headphones, so I stopped using them. Oh, no. They, they, actually, once you get them working, they work very well. They just take five minutes to warm up. They're like my, they're like my first Corvair. Uh, I had a Corvair. The wor who owned a who owned a Corvair here? Anybody? It was the world's worst car ever made by General Motors. It it was guaranteed to leak oil, and and uh, and even from day one when, when it was a brand new car, it always it it, it was a General Motors a, attempt to make a Ferrari, <laughs> a rear engine car, or whatever. <laughs> hey, real quick, I got a question. Back to what this is, Alex. By the way. Um, when we were talking about getting somebody on Zoom or Skype or whatever, doing that face-to-face, -face, FaceTime situation, um, sometimes when, well, maybe I set it up wrong, but I can tell that people feel a little bit hesitant to do that because maybe they don't know me or maybe that's a limiting belief that I have. But setting that up and setting up that right expectation, you know, Mr. Diamond, let's, you know, let's, it seems like we're going in a good direction here. Let's jump on a uh, a face to face and meet each other, something like that. But I, it just doesn't come across that smooth, in my opinion, yet. At least well, for me. Um, it, it's to me, it, it's a question of practicality. What's the best environment to sell over the phone, face texting, to face. or yeah. face to face? That right? You don't need me to tell you. Yeah. You don't need to go to a seminar for that, right? Right. So, and if listen, if somebody says no, which occasionally happens. I'll say, okay, no, no problem. Like I got a guy in the car driving, like you're driving a car right now. A uh, video is not very practical. It's a distraction. I don't want you to get in an accident or something. I, and that's reasonable. But if I get somebody who I'm speaking to, I'll always ask, hey, do you, hey, uh, Felipe, do you have an iPhone, man? I do. Yeah. You know what? I'm really enjoying this conversation stroke. Can I, can I, uh, I'd like to meet you face to face. I feel, I want to make you an offer. I want to find a way for us to do business today and solve that problem. Would you Just mind FaceTime me, FaceTime face me, me, man? Just do it. FaceTime Boom. me. How hard I, is, I, how hard is that? Like, and, and Alex, you just met, you just said it. It's, it's, it's a limiting belief. I was just reading today and lie. It's an acronym. It's an acronym for limited idea entertain. If you think they're going to say no to the, to the zoom or the video call, that's exactly what you're going to, you know, you're going to get out there. But if you assume they're going to get it, because really, you know, that that's as close as it gets in today's environment, you know, like when we're not driving for three hours, just what's the worst thing that can happen? The guy will say, no, that's fine. Let's just continue on the phone. What's the right. worst <clears throat> thing that could happen? Alan, uh, we've been ignoring you. I apologize. What's the worst thing that could happen when you make a suggestion to somebody I'd like to uh, listen. I'd like to ask you a few questions, get some information. Could we go on video? Because I'm serious about making you an offer today. Is that is that all right, sir? Boom. Anything wrong with that? No, I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. Some people are not comfortable with video. Hey, I respect that. But um, hey, if, if they have if they're ready, willing, able to do something today, whether it's by video or not, then let's make it happen. I I. I took your uh, suggestion of doing like the vid, uh, attaching the video to my LOI so that like, you know, they see who I am. Cause you know, I think credibility is like uh, something that people's looking for. And they're like, Hey, what's your company's name? Do you have a website? I was like, I don't got a website nor a company. I'm a real estate entrepreneur. Um, I tell you what, man, um, in order for you to believe me that I'm a human and I'm not a robot, I'll send, I'll send you a little bit of an excerpt so that you know that I'm a living, breathing buyer here. What if you were a sales trainer and you have 200 clients and, and, a, and 25 companies and you're doing a training call and 50, 60 percent of people are not turning on their video? Are you but 
do you have a responsibility? These people, you're trying to train them to be more outgoing, more comfortable in their own skin, better communicators. Do you have a responsibility to say, hey, folks, turn on your video if you want to get good value here today? Is that your responsibility or should you let them sit and cower in the background with video off? What would you do oh, if yeah. you were the, you're the sales trainer? What would you do? Um, yeah, you, you definitely have to get them to uh, cross that uncomfortableness into being comfortable with seeing their face on video. I mean, I come across this in church, man. I, I tell my people, my group, they're like, all right, guys, I need to see your beautiful faces here, guys, to make sure that you guys are still not, uh, you guys are not sleeping. Because, you know, I'm dealing with like- uh, 15, <laughs> That's great. 15 to 22 <laughs> it, it, year old, and we're having like, you know, <laughs> discussion topics. And I'm like, guys. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's, it's called peer pressure. You know, like you have, uh, and, and it's part of the psychological triggers, you know, like the, the conformity and, you know, if one person is doing it, the other, you know, are, are going to follow for us, you know, like I, I train my sales team and one of the non-negotiables is video on because nothing beats this besides in person. <laughs> it like, if you're not, if you're not going to be in video, it's, you better be driving to look a house because otherwise it's, it's unexcusable. We have phones, we have computers, we have everything. And for a sales trainer, yeah, you want to, you know, like it, it's tough to keep an audience in, engaged, you know, unless you're Claude, but keeping an audience engaged like for an hour or two, that's, that's a mission. But uh, you do it on video. Sometimes, you, you know, like Tony Robbins, when he does something like, hey, everybody just stand up and do some exercises. And, and, he, and plays the, he plays the music, he turns up the air conditioner and everything. If, if, whether you like or dislike Tony Robbins, can you see his methodology, what he does to get the audience? What does he do to control that audience? What is, what are all, you look at his methods. He does a little humor, makes them laugh. He plays the music. He interacts individually with audience members. Okay. So everybody's sitting there. Oh God, I hope he doesn't call on me. You know, uh, and what does he do? I mean, this guy, you, you, you know, no matter how you want to criticize other people, but you look at a Grant Cardone who can fill up a Las Vegas casino. What is the attraction? Why are these guys so attractive to so many people? You can't disregard that. What, what makes them so attractive? I would think maybe their movement. They're moving all the time, getting people excited, getting people motivated. So maybe just, um, you know, how they get people to move, have them just to be engaged, you know? Seems like they're using the, all the different senses also. Keep going. Go deep on that. Give me more. Yeah, to, uh, to add on, Steve, I mean, I think to what Steve's saying, um, you know, on top of that, again, you're just using all senses. You're playing loud music, right? Uh, you're adding energy. You're, you know, they're, they're um, like you said, the uh, turning down the AC or turning it up so it gets cold, you know, keeping people awake. Yeah, but they do, but they do a lot more. If you watch these great speakers, do you guys ever watch on YouTube these greats, Les Brown, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, Anthony Rock? You see these great speakers. They have a certain magic. Uh, they're very passionate. They're very enthusiastic. Are they self-conscious at all? Um, I mean, they just let it. They, they let their freak fly. No, I mean, no fear. <laughs> no fear. Uh, uh, here's a news flash, guys. Everybody's insecure. We're all deep inside. We're all a chicken shit. No matter what they tell you, no matter what they tell you, I can guarantee you that the, the person that shows up with the most swagger, they're probably very self-conscious about, you know, like the way their, their, you know, their face looks like or whatever. We're like, we tend to be our biggest like critics and like, and, and that can, can wear you guys down. So that's why, you know, like you have to also become your own your own cheerleader, your own person to say like, Hey, listen, you're, you're a badass. You can do it. You can call these people. You're going to make money today. Somebody wants to, somebody wants to give you money today. Yeah. Let's just call. <clears throat> Aren't we, you said something, we're all insecure. So if you can put on, remember there's an inner and outer salesperson. The inner one is thinking about what strategy, what system should I use? Uh, should I go back to my script? Should I, what should I, and the outer salesperson the theater, the theater, the actor, the thespian, they have to put on um, a, maybe, I don't want to say false face, but they have to put on something to make people entertained, to, sh uh, to keep them interested, to keep them enthusiastic. They have to, they ha you have to do that. How many of us have heard boring speakers? Who remembers high school chemistry? I mean, 
Okay. And maybe unless you love chemistry, I should, you know, but who remembers the, remember in high school and in college, we, we had great, we had great teachers who made it so much fun. They had that flair, that love, that passion. And, and they, they like, they invited you to participate in everything. So the, you want your 45 minutes just went so fast. Then you had the other kind of teacher, you know who I mean? Oh God, I got Mrs. Clancy again. Uh, yeah. And then you go and it's like, you're just watching the clock. You're watching the clock move. It's almost going backwards. It's so slow, you know? <laughs> I mean, which one do we like? I mean, so are we kind of in the end when we when we're speaking to people, are we responsible for creating a pleasant environment? Is that sales? Is that persuasion? Yeah. Or should we just throw a bunch of facts and figures to people? Yeah, we, we just got to be really we got to be really good actors. And I think what I also want to talk about is let that fear go. A lot of times, if you look at the Bible, the Bible talks about fear, but it talks about it 365 times. Do not fear, do not fear, do not fear. So once we take time to practice, practice our scripts, or there's not scripts, practice our gut system, and then, or, or, or even before you get on the phone, take about maybe 10 or 15 minutes, just start smiling. Just smile. Go to, your, go to your bathroom and just smile. When you use your muscles, you're going to be more relaxed. You're going to come off as someone who's, who's enjoyable to talk about, with. People have likability and trust. Because the more that you do that, you're going to get that. You're, they're going to feel like, okay, this guy's a good guy to work with. You know, he's not pressuring me. But we got to do our part every day. I had this one high school football coach. He was fantastic. Man, he, before a game, he, we would get together, and he was so motivated. And once he got done talking, man, you're ready to go out there and play, man. Now, we ended up being undefeated because he was just inspired to get us out there and just, let's go, guys. You can do it, man. And just like, boom. And we're out there making it happen. And it was fun. So do not fear, man. Every day, guys, don't worry about the fear. Just go for it. Dylan Thomas said, do not go gently into that night. Great poet, if you've ever wanted to read. And this is the difference. You know, we all say, well, I, I get people every day. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be a millionaire. I want to be. What are you willing to do? My mentor used to, my mentor, Max, used to always say, everyone wants to be rich, but very, very few are willing to pay the price. What's the price? Felipe, you're up. What is that price? Roll up your sleeves, pick up the FN phone and talk to people. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. Is it going to, are you going to make a lot of mistakes? Hell yeah. You're going to oh, make yeah. a lot of mistakes, but picking up on what Steve said, you know, like don't let the fear get the best of you and, and, and start, you know, like looking for excuses as of not to, not to talk to people as of not to have your sales calls. You know, like the fear is there. You got to acknowledge it, but then you got to turn it into action because we're all insecure. It's true. I mean, is this prospect going to say no? Are they going to reject my offer? Boo, F and who? I mean, so what? You know, you're going to make more offers. You're going to make more calls. And remember, like sales is the transfer of emotion. Ooh, I like No that. emotion, no sale. Okay. Where, and where did you get that from? Sales. Jordan, I'm writing that down. Sales. Jordan is, Belfort, uh, the Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, he's, okay. He said it, and and yeah, you got to give credit where it's so you know, like the the last thing you want is to be like a, like a you know, there's copycats out there. I'm not gonna say names because, no. but there's oh, people out there that they they try to steal intellectual property from Claude, and and you know, like they're. I mean, what goes around comes around. But but you gotta like whenever you hear something good, you know, you gotta be, uh, you gotta give credit where it's due. But Bottom line is this, no emotion, no sales. Sales is a transfer of emotion and emotions are contagious. So if you're feeling down, depressed, because life happens when life happens, you know, like somebody cut you off on the highway, you know, like your, you know, like your pet rock just died or whatever, uh, you know, what do you got to do? You got to just give yourself probably 30, 90 seconds to go boo f and who and then just you know like anchor yourself into a positive emotion go to a go to a positive place something that you like that brings you joy nothing brings me more joy after you know like the the, the great moments with my wife and kids than making money the, the emotion of winning the emotion of, of closing a sale just remember that and 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 why why is this important because the best moment to close a deal or close a sale is right after a sale so if you're if you're gonna close a deal today tomorrow whenever that is the next thing you want to do is pick up the phone and call your next prospect 
because I guarantee you that's going to make you more money. That's what to, to me, it's, it's what it's been working out and, and where 2021, it's looking way better than 2020 already, just because of, 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 of simple, you know, tweaks and emotion and, and all of that. How important is it to be happy to, when you're right, when you can sell, when you can persuade it, somebody, you make a sale and you're a good provider. I'm going to go old school here because that's just my belief. And you can go to your wife, your kids, your family members, you can pay your bills, you can be a good provider. How important is that to not be, not be dependent on a government system, get your free cheese, get your, you're waiting for your stimulus check. How important is it that you can get on the phone, you can talk to other people, have good conversations, and you're going to get your no's, but you're also going to get a significant amount of yeses, and you're going to be a, and you're going to be a provider, and you can hold your head up high. How important is that? To me, it's, it's, it's monstrous. It's very big. Is that, I don't know if that, I, I, you know, not, not being, not worrying. Uh, my wife needs something. My kids need something or anything. The money's there. Go ahead. It's important. We need a new washing machine. My kids want to go to a good college. The money's there because I busted my butt. I became a great gut salesperson. How important is that to us? Uh, you, you feel unstoppable. I think once you get to that uh, place in your life and I'm, you know, I'm still working on that. And, um, I appreciate what uh, Steve and uh, Felipe said about mm -hmm. fear. And you know what? I think um, I, I, I shake less now in my phone calls and what Steve said. I mean, I don't, I don't mean to get preachy, but um, this is one of my, um, one see. of my reminders to myself, second Timothy one, seven for God yeah. has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, power and love and self-control. Self yeah. Yeah. So I, I got to read this right before I make my phone call because, you know, I'm like, get out of your mind, bro, and just do it. So Exactly. He's anchoring yeah. a positive emotion. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what here I look at this. I look at this every day. I have my little post-its all over. OK, one of my, one of them is success. One person at a time. I don't need to. I don't need to market to 10,000 people who don't want to be bothered. I just need to talk to one human being who has a need, who wants to take care of that what? need today, who has the money to pay for that need or the willingness to finance it and has the authority and the character to make a commitment today. I just need that one person and my life is groovy. I don't know if I'm allowed. I, I, to, I don't know if I'm allowed to use that word anymore. It's kind of. Is, am, I, am I allowed to say that anymore? Is that? Uh, are, uh, I mean, starting Friday. Starting Friday, <laughs> since you're going to be in California, you may want to. You may want to call your attorney. You may want to call Adam just in case. Stop but, in uh, at a college. Stop in at a college and see. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, I I share on the chat like and and guys, if you remember last week, last Monday talked to, uh, Claude talked about how important it is to have, you know, like the, the a healthy routine, you know, like a, a ritual, like Steve also in a previous call, he talked about when he wakes up at four 30, he, he reads the Bible. It's like, it's like your morning ritual for success. That's what separates the millionaires from the, the amateurs and the, and the people that they're, you know, crying out there for, for the next stimulus check and, and all of that. Uh, whatever works for you, reading scriptures, whatever, uh, you want to do uh, watching? I watch. I personally watch a three-minute video from from a, a guy that you know. Like it's it's a he's a great author. Um, name is Jeb Blunt, and he talks about a lot about mm. prospecting, a lot about prospecting, and uh, and and he gets me pumped. He gets me pumped because I go like, okay. And really, the message is, is like it's not what you sold; it's what you sell today. Nobody gives a shit about what you've done over the past couple of years. Let's say you know Claude had the best month ever in March. He's not gonna. He's not gonna take the, the food out of the gas. He's probably gonna have the best month in April too, because you get that momentum, you get that going, and that, and that you only get it with the passion of doing doing the shit you love. Because if you feel miserable, if you're doing nine to five, you're never gonna do that. You're never gonna see that level of success. I have a I have a story to share with you guys. Not a story. It actually happened yesterday. Very good client. I'm not gonna mention his name because I don't have his permission, but I don't think he'd mind. Um, he's, he's, uh, Mr. Something on our group calls on Monday, Mr. You know who, and he called me up yesterday. You know who I mean? And, um, he called me up and he said, Claude, I just did a deal with a lady. I've been working on this deal with this lady for almost a year and we're at the closing table 
And at the closing table, she threw me a left hook. She said, no, I'm not going to close today. I, uh, my credit uh, needs to be repaired, and I'm not going to do this deal. She's selling him a house that he's going to generate about forty to $50,000 on, net, net. And she, at the closing table, after a year of working everything out, it was a complicated situation. And she, she, she walked away from the closing table and threw this other thing in. He called me up. He was upset. He was, I mean, I would be too. And what, do you, what would you advise that man to do? She asked him, I need my credit repaired. Otherwise, I'm not doing this deal with you. Um, and she walked off the table and she won't answer phone calls or anything. And he was very mad. What would you advise that guy to do? And I'll give you the answer, by the way. It, uh, he, I gave him some advice and it's a happy ending, but I want to hear what you guys would do. Well, he's got contracts on that on that deal, right? I mean, he can hit a, he can get the attorneys involved. Right. But what happens, but when you get attorneys involved, do you get a resolution right away? No. Not usually. No. So but, what's, that is a good salute. That is a solution, Lou. You're right. Sometimes the threat of going legal can, can help to solve a, a, an issue, but it's usually not the, is there an easier or more pleasant way to solve it? I'm sure there is. I don't know. It. Okay. Who else? You must have brought up your credit for a reason. May I ask why? Um, because, you know, um, I, I, through this whole one year and my property was in foreclosure and everything through this whole year, um, my, I had to declare myself bankrupt. My credit was ruined. And uh, I just, I, I need to do something about this. Yeah, I can totally understand where you're coming from and where you want to go. And suppose I can help you with fixing your credit. What would you tell me next? Okay, put a time frame on it. Always a time frame. Let's imagine for a moment and then time frame. Go ahead. You're oh, uh, let, let's imagine for a moment that we can fix what needs to be fixed within the next uh, today. And you can do what you have to do in order for you to live a fulfilled life. Um, what, what would happen next? if we had your credit repaired today. Okay, you're close. I, I only want what, you're close. You're so damn close. You, you were missing the reciprocity and you kind of went fulfilling your life. That wasn't what she wanted. She just wanted oh, her credit. Okay. She wanted someone to take care of her credit. She wanted somebody, um, she didn't know how to do it. It's not a, she's not a sophisticated person. Let me put it like that. Okay. In, so, in the event that we can get somebody to co-sign on whatever it is that you're trying to achieve or acquire is there any reason okay no no right. no, no you were on the else. right track else. somebody else somebody somebody keep going on that credit repair and and imagine you know, and also a little stroking and nurturing i understand how you feel you know and everything and then when you get all that, when you get that little commitment through the imagination and the time frame, then you use the reciprocity to get what you really want. What is it that you really want as the investor after working one year on a deal? To close. Yes. Go ahead. Somebody else. Come on. Hervasio, you're too can quiet. I, can, I, can I ask you what? Uh, what's the reason that she needed to have her credit repaired? She, who knows? It's a, just... Wacky prospect shit, okay? It was just uh, left field at the closing table, a year of negotiation. This guy has busted his butt to make this lady happen. They're at the table and out of nowhere, she says, oh, my credit's ruined because of the, uh, I was behind in my payments and I need somebody to help me take care of that. And I'm not doing this deal until I take care of that. So do we get, here's the, here's the point. Do you get mad and emotional and walk out of the room? Or do you fix the problem with guts? You got to control yourself. Felipe, and aim to fix. Yeah. Remember what Felipe said earlier about um, emotional control. This is why he Felipe helped me to remind reminded me of this. What is emotional control? Somebody somebody fix this deal. Be the advice. Be the coach here. Go ahead, Avasio. Well, so assume that I you know I, first of all you know I I, I completely understand. I've, you uh, know, I I have helped others in your situation before where they've been behind on payments 
Luckily, I'm, I'm able to help them find a solution. And once the mortgage is satisfied, their credit starts to go back into good standings. No, I want mine. I'm not doing this deal. I, I need someone to help me. I need a um, I need somebody or something to help me fix this credit. I, I, I don't want my credit ruined the rest of my life. I'm not doing this deal. You need to help me. I, I completely understand how you feel. You know, uh, you probably worked on your credit for a long time to have it, you know, get ruined. But I, but I want to tell you, do you want me to sugarcoat it or do you want me to tell you the truth? No, um, Miss um, Prospect. No, no, don't. All she, off the role play. All she wants is someone to hold her hand. What did Felipe say about secure? Inse- we're all insecure. She doesn't want to deal with this. She doesn't know how. Uh, there's, she's not the most sophisticated. All she wants is someone to fix this problem. It, one sentence and, and Alan was okay. very close. Just you're working too hard on this, guys. Yeah. Simple- assume, assume that I can show you how your credit is going to be repaired once we make this deal happen. No, I won't do this deal until I know something's in the works. OK, well, if you allow me to sit down and show you how what we're doing now is going to lead to your credit getting better. Well, why don't you why don't you give her something? Why don't you say, how about something like, you know what? I understand your problem and this has affected your credit. You want to travel now that the pandemic's over. Is that is that right, Mrs. Smith? Yeah, I've been stuck, you know, worrying about this all this time. Oh, I haven't it, been able oh, to do nothing. I, I completely understand. You know, when you travel nowadays, you need a credit card to get a hotel room, rent a car. You probably want to go. And I totally understand. It's a big problem. You know what? Let's imagine for a moment. I know some companies. I, In fact, I have a friend. Um, he's an attorney and he helps people fix credit. I'm going to call him. Imagine for a moment I call him today and he call, he gets in touch with you. And now you have a you have someone working for you to fix your credit. That is that what you're looking for? Is that what you'd like to see? today that sounds great but i i you know i want my credit that my credit is ruined right now you well know, it I, took you know it took you years to do get in this situation i'm not, yeah i mean can i tell you the truth it's probably going to take him weeks and months okay meanwhile i can put that in order i can get that started if that's what you'd like would you like someone to help you put your credit in order and get it done it won't be done overnight i'm not going to mislead you it need, it'll take a little time. Is that what you want? Well, yeah, that's, that's, that's my aim. That's, that's what I would like to see. If yeah. I, if I'm at, uh, how would you feel if we had someone working, a specialist to improve your credit? And maybe in May or June, your credit has been improved. We got some things removed that shouldn't have been on there. And you're able to get a new credit card or, and establish your credit. How would that make you feel? And you know someone that can do this for me? That's, I know somebody, I'm going to call them right now. And if you agree, I, want, I need your permission and they're going to start working. I'm going to have them contact you today and they're going to start working on improving your credit, which might take a while. Okay. I don't want to mislead you. Is that, is that what you're looking for? I'm trying to get you off the role play. This is part of the yes process. We got to get them up the yes ladder. I've got to get her used to saying yes for a while because I'm getting, you're playing her very well, by the way. This is what he communicated to me. Very big stall and objection. So I finally got a yes out of her. So when we finally get a yes, the problem, there's a resolution. What do we, what do we do next? Somebody take over my position. What do we get back that we really want? The sale of the house, right? Go ahead. Close. Go, Go ahead. Close me on the house. I'll be her now. Reversal again. So assuming we put all these all these pieces in place, will you be ready to move forward now? Um, yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. I just um, I, my daughter talked to me about my credit and we want to take a trip together with the grandkids. And I, I don't want to be embarrassed because I don't have a, I can't rent a car or anything like that. And um, um, I'm sorry. And thank Yes. If you could take care of this, uh, this, that would be great if you could do that for me. Thank you. So this sounds like something you do want to do. Sounds like the, the picture, the plan you had in mind. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's get back into the office. We'll talk to the attorney, sit down. No, no, no. I want you off the role play. You're close. I want you to, could you do me a favor now? When's the magic moment? When do you ask for, when do you get close somebody? What's, this is the magic moment now. You have to, this is when you get a, you do an ad, you give, 
You give, you give some more and then you ask for what you really want. Go ahead, close me. Okay, so. This is good I'm, shit. This is, this is sales right now. This is real sales. Nobody else teaches this. No. S sounds like we have a good plan uh, to get you where you want to be. Uh, sounds like we have, it, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy that you're making such great decisions for even bringing up and thinking about your credit score. It's such an important thing. So I'm glad that we got that squared away. Do you think that you're ready to now? Do you think you're ready to make the move and sell me the house at this point? Yeah, I, yeah, I am. No, get off the roll plate. Use, get the obligation though. You've given her, listen, I'm glad you brought it up. I'm glad we can solve it. I'm going to call this person. They're going to be in touch with you. And sometime in May or June, I'm sure that you're going to, hopefully your credit and everything is going to be repaired. But could you do me one favor today? Give, give, give some more, and then ask. That's reciprocity. Cialdini touches on this, but most people don't know how to use it. You can't just say, okay, I did this for you. Now let's get to that closing table. There's a psychology. There's a, there's a, what's a massage, a finesse here. Somebody else, close me, just like I, did, I showed you. Go ahead. Steve, go ahead. So if we are able to go ahead and repair your credit, have someone repair your credit, talk to you about repairing your credit. I thank you for getting hold of us. We'll do our best. They will do their best with you. It might take two or three months, but they're going to do it. If we're able to do all this for you right now, can we go back to the table, get everything okay and sign today at two o'clock? I'll think about it. Okay. You guys are missing the most important for work, uh, section. Do me a uh, and you do me a small favor, small favor. Give, give, give. And then could you do me a small favor with a little thespian skill, just a little tenderness, a little, you know what? I'm so glad we worked this out. Compliment, stroke, little nurture, a little imagine. Could you do me a small favor though? What is she going to say? Have you just changed the dynamics of the universe? When you say, could you do me this? I've done all this for you. What's human, what's human psychology, behaviorism at this point when you have bent over backwards to do something that costs you nothing? It's a phone call, who cares, right? Bottom line, what, what, what's, the, what's human nature when you give, 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 and you, you did something that's totally unimportant, and then you ask for that small favor? That person feels that they're in debt to you, so that oh, of course they could What do, do we call favor. that? And, is that an emotional obligation? Okay, somebody close me. Do me a favor. Come on, somebody could do it. You know, what, you know what, Sue? I made a decision. Uh, we're we're going to do some business today. What would you like to see happen next? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just want my credit repaired. And thank you for taking care of that. I appreciate it. Okay. Can you do me a favor? Thank you. Thank you. Can, can you can, can you do me a favor? And if we do all this for you today, can we get you back in the table to see if we can get you? Oh, absolutely. You've been nothing but nice to me. And uh, you know what? You're a great guy. Thank you so much. You're going to, oh, I got uh, and whatever I can do. Yes. Where do I sign? Let's close. Yeah, I, I got an opening at two and I got one at three. What, what's oh, no, let's do it right. Three. That's right do now. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go to the, I'm going to call up the lawyer right now and, and just tell him we're, we're going to close We're you've been too nice to me. Okay, fantastic. Well, think, tell you what I'll do. I'm going to send you, if you don't mind, I'm going to send you this agreement so we can get fine, everything finalized. It. I'll do it in the next 30 minutes. Okay. Get it back to me. Well, and thank you very much for doing this. And we'll get this closed for you. And we'll take care of your credit over the next two or three months. Yeah, give them a round. Somebody okay. close me. Whew. You, <laughs> see, yeah. you see, I could tell you guys to just ask, ask, and read the script. And But these are the subtle, these are the little micro moves that are the difference between someone thinking about it, um, you know, or getting everybody gets mad and walks away. And, and you don't make any money. And the guy, this really happened. And he called me this morning while I was taking my run. And he said, Claude, I did exactly what we, what we just role played. I told him to do exactly this. And he said, Claude, I just closed on the deal. One phone call. I closed it. He's going to make $40,000, $50,000 
as opposed to being what was the word you used uh, that emotional term felipe emotional control uh, or something yeah i mean as 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 getting to a pissing match threatening with a lawsuit being in protracted litigation for a year and a half and you know watering down every single dollar of your profit because that's how it works really that's with the court system that's how it works and you know you got to be the adult in the room and 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 what do they want just like Klaus said somebody that holds their hand that makes them feel that you know like what they're going through it's more common than than what they think that you know like they're very they're in a state of of, of self-deprecation you know they're like yeah you know what i'm a I'm a douchebag. I ruined my credit and now I have to sell to this, this investor and all that. And, and they're expecting us to fight back, but they're, you know, that's where the redirection comes in. It's like, listen, I get it. This is, you know, like, it's not your fault. Uh, and, and, and you know what? I've made a decision. I have a personal friend of mine, you know, Steve, uh, he's, he's the man to talk to about, uh, about fixing credit. And, and you know what? I'll, 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 I'll make a phone call. And he'll take care of you. He'll get you taken care of. So imagine for a moment, it's the summer, you're in Yellowstone, you're able to rent this beautiful car and you're traveling with, the, with your daughter, with the kids and all that. Your credit is going to get fixed. It's not going to happen overnight because, you know, we're not going to sell you unicorns and rainbows. You know me for a year. This is how I work, you know. And, uh, but can I ask you a small favor? And then do you do the dramatic pause? Why? Yeah. What did you really give up? You see, the, the art of, of persuasion and part of that, part of sales and persuasion is negotiation. So a lot of times you're going to give up, you're going to give up something that's not really important to you, but you're going to act like it is. Oh my gosh, you want me to help you? Repeat? Uh, you know what? I, I, got a, I, got a, I got a company I know, we'll take care of it and boom. And, and if I do that for you and imagine for a minute your credit is improved or anything, no guarantees, but we, I can put you in touch with a company or somebody and they'll work with you. And imagine in May or June, you're at Disneyland with the grandkids, you need to buy them a t-shirt or, or something and, and the money's there and they love you because you showed them a great day and everything. I'm gonna help you to make that dream come true. That's my job today. Boom. Now that sounds like, you know, you're moving mountains, right? You're pushing the boulder. Okay. When it, when it, all it is, is you go online, you see credit repair service, you Google it, you talk to somebody like, can you help this lady? I'll, I'll give you 500 bucks. Okay. If you can help this lady, call her right now. Boom. He's going to make 50,000. So, and that's what I told him to do. And then, but he said, could you do me this favor? And boom. See, yeah, my, as, my, my. My, my biggest concern, Claude, is, I mean, we know who it is. I mean, why would it take you a year not to know this? I mean, to me, I want to know this stuff up front. How can you go a year without working for someone not knowing that she's got an issue with her credit? It was know, a very, it was a complicated deal. It was really five properties. It was a lot of negotiation. It was a lot of heirs and siblings. You know, real estate, you know, yeah, yeah, sometimes, yeah, yeah. you know, it, and it, it, I didn't want to go into all the nuances of right, it. Right, right, right. But this was the big deal. This was the one, the big money deal. And this just ha and this sort of thing happens to people in real estate, doesn't it? Where people yeah. come out, of, they talk to somebody else. Oh, you're getting ripped off. You need to do this and this. You thought you're on a honeymoon because you spoke with them last Friday. Here it is Thursday, a week, almost a week later. You think you're still on that honeymoon, but they've talked to, have you ever had that where, this is why it's so important to get firm commitments to even tell them, listen, you're not going to call me tomorrow and change your mind or to close today or get an appointment today. This is why what can happen in a span of time from the honeymoon last week to Thursday to Thursday this week? What can happen in that span of time? Change your mind. People Everything that could go wrong will go wrong. Yeah. It will. Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law comes always comes into effect, doesn't it? But whose responsibility is it? to anticipate that shit can go wrong. <laughs> there were, my, my mentor used to, he used to say this, I'm sorry about the bad language all the time, but there's no other way to communicate. This is what he said. He said, there are no bad prospects. There's only shitty salesmen. <laughs> can I get another amen for amen. that? Because it's, 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 it's a lot of amens today. <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 in the end, 
you've got to take total. Uh, what did you guys say? Somebody said so, going to the bathroom mirror. Was that you, Steve? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In the end, you're responsible for the questions, the environment, the relationship. This is sales 2021. You can't just ask for the order five times and read a script anymore. It won't work on capital sales. It won't work. It's, but if you want to make it work and you practice and you study, like we're doing here, and thank you, gentlemen, this was, see, I get a lot out of this too. This kind of reinforces my beliefs because I know after this meeting, and it's going to end in a second, I'm going to go on the phone. I've got to make some follow up phone calls. I'm warmed up at bat now. I'm going to say, why are we talking? What, what's your biggest challenge? Well, oh, why don't you just give it to a realtor? Or why are you living in your mother in law's basement with the 10 chihuahuas? Why don't you just move? You've got to ask these questions and be, and be the diagnostician, not the guy reading a script or just playing it like your competition does, because you're going to get the same boring rejection all day long. Who wants the last word? Who wants the last word here? Before We're going to go. We got to go. I got to pack a car and close the house here. I would like to say, I, you know, I, I'm, this is kind of like my last call for right now with Claude. I've been with Claude for a year. I might be coming back in, on in October, might. August. I've done very well with might. the system. You know, I know, but I mean, I, yeah. but I know, but I know, but I just want to, I enjoyed it. Felipe, you know, Horacio, Alan, Lou, I mean, we got a lot of times, this is a Thursday call, so I really enjoyed all the time and using the techniques every day. I mean, it just helped out so much. I mean, like exactly. I mentioned to um, Claude, I mean, in March, we had like five sales. We closed and made over 75, 70,000 in sales. Just, I mean, we did that the month before. I mean, just it's flowing. Because wouldn't, we're using wouldn't, be wor wouldn't be worth renewing for another year. No, I know. But I'm trying to keep my cash flow down, keep my marketing costs down. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, I'm going to nag you here for a minute because oh. uh, I've been a client. And, and, and again, guys, I, I've got people give me shit because I've been a client of Claude for the past four and a half years. OK. And every time that that, you know, people ask me, it's like, how I mean, what else is what what else is there to learn? Why don't you get another mentor? Why don't you just get by, by another program? And I always counter with this. I always counter with this. If you remember the top, top elite athletes in the world, let's just think about Michael Jordan, uh, Dwayne Wade, uh, Kobe Bryant. They had the same the same about the guy uh, who gave Tiger Woods driving lessons. Yeah, that guy that you know that the one that that gave him the keys for that. But uh, they all had something in common. They had the same personal trainer for ten plus years. So if you really want to take your your game to the next level, you got to challenge yourself to you know to to think bigger, and be like, how can I how can I you know like, you know maybe it's scary because it's an investment and sometimes cash flow you know like deals it's, it's a roller coaster and for us is we've had good years and bad years but overall it's like every on every call i learned something new you know first i started off i was a forty thousand dollar a year guy this year alone last month between both of my businesses we netted not netted but we grossed three hundred thousand and uh and mr. uh mr biden's gonna get you you're close you're almost I'm moving to puerto rico so i'll be like like <laughs> So long, loser. But uh, uh, and you, you're gonna hit that four hundred thousand dollar pro problem, man. <laughs> yeah, and I, and now that I'm that I'm switching into like my own business into the the sales training, I go like every. I mean, I see myself. If you really want to believe yourself as an elite athlete, an elite salesperson, you need to have a mentor because I guarantee you that the minute that you don't have that accountability, that you know, like that discipline to to show up on a call and and bring your A game and all that. That may, you may fall off the wagon. So I, I would love to see you on the next call, just in case. Yes. <laughs> well, and then just send me, just send me my 10%, please. I, I will. <laughs> I, I will. I'll send, you, good. I'll send you another three minute timer here. It's, it's, it's quite a compliment when your students are doing your sales for you. I thank you so much. <laughs> hey, good. I'll see you guys later. I got, a, I got 1,132 miles to drive. See you later. Thank you. Great session. Thank you. 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 Thank you